everyone. How are you today? Kind of talking nasally. Not sure why. So anyway, I kind of wanted to do some history because I am noticing that as I'm getting reported so much, um, there are people obviously paying attention and they might start to realize that there's more to LBL than meets the eye. Like, so many of us were drawn in with that initial, oh, it's a sweet, old, fat, drug-addicted, Xanax-abusing, narcissistic, arrested, development, elder, brat. How cute. But, one of the things that was, um, that happens then is that, you know, you're first you're like, oh, how cute, you know, give it a view, the poor thing, you gotta support everybody where they're at. But then you see something just sinister underneath that, no, no, this is not a nice woman. This is not. This is every bit of Ursula. Look at it. It looks, it, if it looks like it, talks like it, acts like it, it is. It's Ursula. Okay? So, one of the things with her is that she'll take on, because she doesn't have enough of a personality of her own, she will take on the personality of those around her and essentially become them. That happens with people who have an addictive personality and there is no doubt that she has a very, very addictive personality. Um, that's why she had the food addiction and had to have the gut stapling. And even though she's had all of that, she's um, busted through that and makes videos of her eating massive quantities. There is nobody who's had bariatric surgery whose bariatric surgeon would agree that then trying to make YouTube videos by eating large quantities of weird food with spoons that are intended to be a sexual turn on for certain subgroups, but she's now trying to turn into a way to get YouTube subscribers is a good thing to do. Okay. So she's got an addictive personality. She was addicted to cigarettes, addicted to chewing. She's got an oral fixation. Okay. She's got an addiction to money, an addiction to spending. She's, uh, you know, we all know that she's a kleptomaniac. She'll steal from any store anywhere and act like it's a big joke. When when, she, when you actually have seen her stealing in the videos, she'll just have things drop into her extremely large handbags. Like, oh, no one else knows what you're doing. You're, you're so sly. Okay, so anywho. What I'm saying here is, is that whoever she globs onto, whatever she sees, she becomes obsessed with it. And this um, comes out in people as well. So she is so lacking in her own development and growth and her autonomy. Autom I can't speak today. I just can't. Uh, I'm just going gonna, just gonna to quit now. Um, whatever. Autonomy that she did not develop her sense of self during her teen years because she was so obsessed with trying to have what everybody else had and trying to make other people think that she had more than everybody else that she lacked growing up on her own and maturing. And that comes out when you see her glob on to somebody that she either wants to be with sexually or friendship wise but then those lines get blurred um, because her obsession with even the same sex people um, turns into such an obsession that she gets jealous of their spouses one of the best cases that we can um, use here for reference is Shawnee. Um, Shawnee is a very unique lady. Um, really pretty in her own way. She's got her own style. Um, very good at just making you feel like a million bucks when you watch her. I'm sure it's the same when you're around her. She's got that 
charisma that you just want to do what Shawnee does, be a part of Shawnee. You just like her. You just like would instantly be like, I'd love to hang out with you. Okay. But that would be it, you know, because the rest of us have like lives and other people who love us and we love them and jobs and hobbies. So she doesn't. Okay. She can drop anything and become that person's everything. And she does. And she will try and push out anybody. So Shawnee comes along. They meet through YouTube. I believe they bonded over bariatric surgery um, and tattoos and nails. And Shawnee was successful in the MLM Sensi. I'm not dissing MLMs. I'm just stating a fact. Okay. So Shawnee could sell because she's charismatic and people want to be like her. They see what she's like. They, they hear the love and fun in her voice. It's natural. It's not forced. It's not fake. She has people that love her and she loves them and she loves life. And she's a good Christian in, um, in the way that she likes to do service for others. She is, she exemplifies her Christianity. You should never have to have somebody state that they are a Christian. You should know that they are a Christian by the way that they act. If they act in the way that Jesus did when he walked the earth, then you know that indeed they are Christ-like and they are a Christian. Okay. So even if Shawnee did not state outwardly that she is Christian because she could be Tao. She could be a Buddhist. She could be anything, but she has stated outwardly that she is a Christian. So I can, you know, say that she's a YouTube personality. I can comment on things that she has shared, but I would have assumed that she's Christian because when, um, when Lori globbed on to her with all that she had, with all of her Ursula tentacles, then Shawnee was expected to do the same. Shawnee was expected to give up everything in her life and share it with LBL. That what was hers was theirs. Okay. This is where it gets creepy because it becomes stalkerish, single white female-ish. Um, Shawnee shared her success in the Sensi world with Lori and propped her up pretty good so that then they could go to the conferences together and uh, and have fun building that. You know, wouldn't, wouldn't everybody love that? You know, if they're in an MLM, wouldn't they love somebody who can drop everything and get ready to go with them to all the conferences, sell together, talk together, recruit, you know, have common leads, um, share stock, you know, how wonderful. Lori couldn't have gotten into Sensi where she was as fast as she was ever, 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 without Shawnee giving her a big boost, okay? Because in an MLM, you need to have people under you um, to to grow forward. Um, that can be good in the, if you're a team leader. Otherwise, if you're a cutthroat, then that means that you're stepping on other people's necks to get tall, and I hate that. Um, so MLMs can be, you know, that triangle can be great that you're climbing up, or it can be down that you've um, angled down and you've crushed all these others. So, you know, two different people, and I believe that Shawnee would climb. I believe that um, Lori would step on people to get where she needs to be, and they'd be squashed, literally dead. Anyway, I digress. So, that was there. So Shawnee gave her that. So Shawnee gave Lori a sense of income um, to start on her own, you know, an income that could build with some residual income. And um, she gave that, she gave that to, to Lori, you know, something to start. And, and then Lori started making that her identity. And in the interviews, she would go and bring her product that she sells from an MLM to interviews the interviews that she has to dress up everything and all this, have her hair down, have her nails down. And then she brings a bunch of stuff that she's selling on the side to the staff and person that she's interviewing. And she would even go to the lengths of plugging in these warmers at the workplace. She applied at a car dealer shop and she went and plugged in the Scentsy warmers and started stinking up the place with the Sensi. And there are so many people who are sen sensitive. Like, um, I, I have a love hate relationship with Sensi. I 
I really like one scent and it's too strong for my husband. So I can't burn it because it gives him a headache. Um, it's just in the, in our scents, in our scent palette. Um, it's one of the stronger scents. Um, he, he would like more mild, you know, but I mean, it's, it's a good product. I know that people do well in it. Um, it seems like they are a company that I think it's owned by Mormons, I do believe. Um, and so it's family centered, family supportive. I think that they even adjusted their minimums, um, for COVID so that they didn't like, uh, deactivate any stylist because they could not meet their selling minimum during COVID. I think I heard that, um, which is amazing, you know, for them to adjust that, that hey, they say, Hey, look, you know, we're all hurting here. We've got this going. So why don't we take a little stress off of you? So, you know, if you look at Sensi in the grand scheme, it, it's, it's good. Now, as I've talked about brand worth before, if you go for an MLM, yeah, you can sign up and you pay to get in. It's a, you know, your paid membership essentially. And then you are representing that brand. Okay. So even though you did not create it, you are not there, you know, making it, you are representing it. So Shawnee gave her a good start to, you know, have some little income because, you know, income money is everything to Lori. She could never have enough money because she's fundamentally unhappy. She could never have enough. She is the quintessential emotional vampire and emotional Hoover, um, vacuum, black hole, however you want to say it, Ursula. So Shawnee gave her this great start, you know, and something that she could actually build on, but she has to put that Lori butt twist on it and take it and make it obnoxious and hurt people in the process because that's what she does. That's her special Lori butt, t Lori butt twist. So she had to have surgery on her knees because by the, you know, I mean, you can just look at her and you can see how the knees would get blown out, blown out. I mean, it's just gravity, you know, the principle of gravity and, um, and by the very nature, but I mean, so many of us have joint pain. It's not like, not like getting old. Like our, I mean, I don't know. Our bodies weren't really made to last as long as they are these days. Like if you look back in the olden days, if you made it to 25, you were like full of wisdom and you knew so much and you had a 12 year old of your own because you know, even the Virgin Mary, Blessed Virgin Mary, they estimate her to be between 12 and 14 when she gave birth to Jesus. Um, and that was, that was the norm, you know, um, women in their childbearing years were around 12 to 14 and, um, they just didn't live. They didn't live past 70, you know? And so there, our bodies have not had long enough to adapt to the length that we're living. And so if you have a very, 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 very large upper body and you clomp around and stomp because you think it's so cute when you shake the furniture every time you walk in anywhere and being obnoxious, you're going to blow your knees out a little faster than most. Okay. So she started having the knee pain, you know, which, and she just took it and ran with it because it was her way to get opioids, her way to go and get doctor's visits, her way to get attention. Oh, her knee. Oh, this. So before when she was just, you know, huge, um, it was like, oh, I need weight loss surgery and then I'll be happy. Well, then she had that. Oh, I need my knee replaced and then I'll be happy. And then she wasn't happy. Oh, I need my other knee replaced. Blah, blah, blah. You know, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And because then when she's in a hospital bed, oh, she thinks it's, you know, a opioid buffet and they're going to give her that. Well, because of people like her, what they do with opioids, there's a war on drugs. And so people who are suffering cannot actually get them. So she had a rude awakening the second time she had knee surgery, um, where she was not in her, um, home turf and she didn't have everybody there to coddle her. And so she got a rude awakening and her only source of support was Shawnee. And she wanted Shawnee 
to be there for everything. So as Lori has no life, she expected that Shawnee would give up the same sacrifice and Shawnee would give up everything, including her marriage, her children, her established sensey business, everything. She wanted Shawnee to give up everything, drop everything and be there for her beck and call. Look, that's what the hospital staff is there for. And you are in the hospital for the duration in which they think you need it. And then you are sent to a nursing home. You are there to get better. You are not there to sit there and form scar tissue and manipulate the system and lay around and whine about your pain. They want you to get up, get out and go. Okay. That's the truth. This is no longer the world where, you know, oh yeah, you had this and you had to wait seven days before you do this and everything because people were getting rich on opioids. And the more that the doctors would prescribe, the more vacations they would take and um they made a lot of money out of people not healing well and it led to a lot of addiction a lot of um generational abuse a lot of early deaths um the list goes on so ultimately in all of the research they found that swelling and scar tissue is your biggest enemy after a surgical event so they want you up well Big fat LBL was not going to get up. She wanted to sit there and whine and have everybody come to her and treat her like this. And the nurses and the staff and everyone were like, get the F up. And she's like, ah, I'm going to call and complain. What's your name? Get your charger. Blah, 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 blah. And then sitting there and she had this roommate and the poor roommate can't get any rest and heal after surgery. She probably, you know, really compromised the healing of the roommate. I can't imagine such a ex terrible experience. But then she like sent this um, grocery list to Shawnee. She's like, Shawnee, I need you to get my groceries. Okay, I want, I can't even remember what it was. Was that peas or something? But it's like, but like everything was like, make sure that they're the, the, the chartreuse grain and they have a medium texture, not waxy. I'm making this up right there. But I mean, honestly, I saw this list that she was giving to Shawnee. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, who the hell do you think? Oh, you think you are LBL. Oh, that is right. I mean, who does that? Like, I don't know, like, how on earth this beast went on through life thinking that she could treat others like this. And I mean, that's where, you know, you get into the argument of chicken and the egg, enabler versus abuser. You know, did Carol create this beast? Did Carol have to become this I mean why why has no one ever told her no knock it off um get up get it yourself you know why doesn't anybody just stand up to her and Shawnee couldn't her husband was rapidly seeing that Lori was abusing Shawnee and exploiting her and using her and so then as a narcissist does, she started triangling and trying to create problems in Shawnee's marriage and telling Shawnee that she should leave Kevin because basically Lori wanted Shawnee to become her new personal slave. So when you hear Lori refer to Shawnee and say all these terrible things about Shawnee, know that there's a history. Know that, no, that is not what happened. Lori started saying that Shawnee's husband was gay and all this after they invited her into their home for their holiday and just tried to make her feel loved and worthy and helped her get another job a part-time job and all the stuff she stole well Shawnee was letting her be in places of employment and so I mean it's just I feel for Shawnee and I feel for anybody who's been involved with her. So, um, for some reason, my film needs to cut here. So, I'm going to cut. But that is the story of Shawnee and Lori sitting in a tree. I will talk to you later.